This is Mike DeFries with Fire Information, and I am here with Annabelle Monte. She is a forester with the Humboldt Toyabe National Forest and involved with the hazard tree removal program that's going on. Uh, we're in Markleyville right now. And Annabelle, can you go ahead and, and explain what this program is all about? So the main, the main focus of this program is we are removing hazard trees along the main roads um, strictly for public safety purposes. We have identified hazard trees that have imminent danger to the road and since this is very focused on public safety we want to get equipment here and people here to mitigate those safety concerns and fall those trees so that they're no longer a hazard and we can open these roads as soon as possible. Where is this work being done right now? So this work is being focused on the Pleasant Valley Road, which is directly behind Markley Village, on the Thornburg Canyon Road, which would be on the west side of Markley Village, and then the Hot Springs Road going towards Gover's Hot Springs on National Forest System lands. Annabelle, what is a hazard tree? as far as this is concerned? As far as this project is concerned, the hazard trees that we're focusing on are strictly on the road. They are trees that have been burned in the fire. Obviously, you see a lot of burned trees around this area, but we are strictly focusing on the road corridors. Um, and what makes a, a hazard tree a hazard tree in this case is the tree has been impacted by the fire and it, it will not survive and it will not flush back out with green needles. You see a lot of crowns that are scorched, which are those trees that have the needles that are still on them. You can probably see some of those in the background behind me. Those needles are dead and they will not photosynthesize and, and the tree will not recover and come back. Another indicator of a tree that's been impacted by fire and has the potential to fall are you see pitch and sap pouring out of the main trunk or the bowl of the tree. That shows that the heat has affected the tree and again it, it's not going to recover. So the main focus of, of focusing on taking these trees out is it's been very windy the last few days. This is a windy area in general, and we don't want these fire impacted trees that are impaired already to break or to uproot completely um, if there's gonna be public and other people in this area. Okay, so here we've got a tree that's it's still standing, right? Yeah, so this tree is still standing. It has a blue flag on it, which means it's been marked for removal. Um, we're just waiting for the hand crews to come here and fall this tree before it can be loaded. This is obviously a hazard tree. You can see the roots and how the roots have been burnt out. And so those roots are very unstable. And so on the bank like this, the second we get a very stiff breeze of any variety, it could potentially topple into the road and block the road or impact anybody who happens to be on it at the time. So this is the top of a tree that was removed and you can see there's still a lot of needles on here and they even look kind of green. Um, but when you, when you touch the needles, you see how easy they come off and they're brittle. These, these trees are scorched. This is what we're talking about when we say they're scorched, is that all of the moisture has been removed and they are no longer photosynthesizing for the tree. And so this tree was 100% scorched, which was why it was taken. So another big sign that we look for for these hazard trees is the pitch coming out like this. You can see the pitch weeping out through all of these places. And even though the, the, the needles might still be on the tree and they might look kind of green, the needles are brittle. The, the inner cambium of the tree has been scorched so that it's not going to recover, which is why this has been identified as a hazard. Pitch is like a sap, huh? It is. That's, pitch is what we refer to as, as the sap of the tree, basically. That's what cycles through the inside of the tree. So here's another example of some scorched needles. You can see that they're very, very dry. They're very brittle. They break very easily. You see how quickly they break and they're, they're just scorched. This is what we refer to as a 100% scorch. And in contrast, I found some green needles. They're still scorched at the tip, but these are normal green pine needles. And you can see how flexible they are, not at the tip where they're scorched, obviously, but down here where they're green, they don't break like that. They're much more limber. And so this is another indicator that this tree is not going to survive, was not going to survive. And uh, it's a great example of that 100% scorch that we talked about. So people see something that looks green. That's a, that's a different that's a different kind of green, right? This is a different color green. Yeah, you can definitely see the difference between these two. This looks, this looks dull and dirty almost, whereas these are very, uh, a much brighter green. And then obviously it's hard to touch pine needles high up in a tree, but um, that's another indicator of just how flexible they are, the color, all of that. Those are all indicators that we look for. 
the areas that we're focusing this hazard tree program on is 100% mortality, meaning that the fire came through and all of the trees in that corridor are dead. If there happens to be a green tree that we think might have the chance to survive, we're actually identifying those to keep because the ultimate goal here is to keep as many green trees as we can because we've already lost so many. So we're not focusing on just clear cutting a corridor or anything like that. We are strictly looking at those trees that we know for sure are not going to survive. They're not going to reflush. You're not going to see them be green in the fall or I'm sorry in the spring and those are the trees that we're focusing on taking down. So you like trees to survive? I do. I like trees. I like trees and I want to see those trees that have survived be able to produce cones and seeds and actually have some natural regeneration in these areas. What is happening to the trees and where are they going to go? One of the one of the big things that I want to clear up is that this is a hazard tree mitigation project. This is not a salvage sale. We are not salvaging these trees. They're not going to a mill. There's no profit being made off of these trees. Uh, we worked out a deal with uh, a couple of the local community and also the tribe to be able to use this wood as firewood. So eventually, once we get things cleaned up and cleared up and we're in a better place to organize this, this wood is going to go as fuel wood to the community. To which community and how will how might people find out about being able to get some of the wood? It's going to go to the Markleyville community as well as the Hungalalte tribe community down the, down the road here. And um, we are already working with public information. Once things kind of get out of this phase and we have the opportunity to focus on more longer term things of publicizing this and making it available, making sure people know where they can go to pick it up, how it's available, what the steps are to do that. Thank you. Anything else that you wanted to add about this, what you're doing out here? The only thing that I really want to emphasize is that there's a lot of heavy equipment out here. There are trees being felled. There's trucks going up and down these roads. There's crews with chainsaws. Please pay attention to the signs that, ad that advertise that that is going on. And we do ask that people stay out of this area as much as possible. It's very dangerous to be around the equipment. Tr like I said, trees are falling and it's not a good idea to be walking or driving on these roads when, this, when these activities are going on.